Hi, I'm Greg Hyland, and welcome to my weekly video blog, Critical Tips. This week, we'll ask the question, what is the number one source of contamination in your control environment? Well, I'm sorry to tell you that the number one source of contamination in your clean room environment is your operator. 70 to 80 percent. Actually, the NEBB organization did a study that showed over 80 percent of contamination in a clean room comes from the operators. I'd like to break this down into basically four different topics. The first is hygiene. The second is undergarments. The third is residual smoke. And then the fourth topic I'd like to cover is attitude. First, let's talk about hygiene. It goes without saying that if you don't have a thoroughly clean face and hands, um, you're going to have loose skin and hair follicles and dandruff and all the like that's going to potentially migrate out. So hygiene is very, very important. And in spite of the fact that cosmetics are not allowed in a clean room, one of the number one source of uh, trace um, metal, uh, trace extractables in a clean room is titanium dioxide. Titanium dioxide is the most common element in mascara. So, um, it's very important that your operators have great hygiene. Their hands and their faces are thoroughly washed and there is no excess lotion or, or makeup on them. The second issue is what are their undergarments? Um, you might not think it matters, but it really does matter what type of garments your operators are wearing under the clean room garment. Materials to avoid would be any type of flannel or velour. Velour and flannel have all types of loose fibers. And these loose fibers can and will migrate out through the neck, through open sleeves, through your ankles, and you're gonna find the undergarment fibers ending up in your clean room environment. Um, a third consideration that a lot of people often overlook is residual smoke. If you have operators that smoke, and if you allow them to smoke during breaks or lunch break, it's really important that you have them gargle or at least rinse their mouth off with a surfactant rinse so that when they come back into the clean room, the residual smoke that was in their lungs does not be emitted out into the clean environment. Now, the fourth most difficult aspect of operator contamination is what I'm going to call the operator attitude. Because most of the contaminants in a clean room are submicron, you can't see them, many operators are a little bit blinded to the fact that they think their press practices are acceptable because they can't see contamination. So you want to ensure that your operators understand the why behind best practices and protocols within the clean room. Just because you can't see the contamination doesn't mean that the, the behaviors that they're doing aren't in fact contributing to contamination. So let me just summarize. Uh, the number one single largest source of contamination contr contaminants in your clean room is gonna be the operator. Over 80% according to NEBB. Um, the first thing you wanna take a look at is operator hygiene to make sure that they're thoroughly clean. The second issue is gonna be their undergarments. Make sure that the fibers are all low linting. The third thing is looking at residual secondhand smoke. And then the fourth consideration is gonna be the operator attitude. Making sure that your operators really have a good foundation understanding of understanding what their best practices should look like. Thank you.